Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about this excellent piece of security research that I'll link to down below. Risks from symmetric key encryption in Ubiquity unifies informed protocol. Now, I'm not good at clickbait, so I'll share with you where this problem occurs. This is very specifically in the adoption process. So if you are adopting this over the public internet or over a network that would be untrusted, if someone was, well, completely capturing all of your data, that exchange that happens during the adoption process does reveal the keys. We're going to walk through how that works, ways to mitigate it, but I want to make sure people know that's not necessarily the end all, oh my gosh, everything that traverses the public internet can suddenly be hijacked, but there's a potential if there was a threat actor on the line essentially listening in to the handshake and process that occurs during the adoption of a device, there is some risk, um, quite a bit of risk. We're going to go through the whole proof of concept and how this works. Now, before we dive on into this, let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. We're going to start here with an overview of the Unify Inform protocol. Ubiquity's Unify product line consists of router switches, Wi-Fi access points. I've done a lot of videos I'm on this channel. These devices do not have any local management, instead relying on controller software running locally or hosted remotely, which is the Unify controller software that I've done videos on as well as far as like how it is a control plane that is multi-tenant, which means I can manage many different companies through one single control plane. And I say that as in I host my controller in the cloud or, for example, there's the Hostify solution, which I've covered on this channel as well. It is a cloud controller where you can manage all of your different devices and you connect each of your sites to this. And it's in that adoption phase, which we're going to show how the exploit works. Improper use of encryption is essentially what's at the heart of this. And what that means is they didn't encrypt when things are in their default mode. It's really basic how Unify handles this. And we're going to cover the demo here in just a second in terms of the setup, but basically all the Unify devices out of the box have the same username and password and same static key in here. And this is a real problem. So this is the improper use because, well, everything comes with the same key. They did this so when you get a brand new device, it's easy to adopt and bring into your network and then the keys are changed. You can't actually use device in an, in an unadopted state. The device is essentially useless, doesn't provide anything real, it doesn't do anything and it's unadopted. So it's not as much of a security concern because you can't even set a config on it without adopting it. But obviously this is where not much of a security concern can become a bigger deal when you dive into it like we're going to here, as in sniffing what exactly happens. And we're going to go down. There's the whole proof of concept and mitigation, which is essentially the mitigation for this is don't adopt these systems unless they're on a trusted network or not going out across the public internet. But I want to walk through now and they have a whole write-up here and I've already compiled it. They have the uh, GitHub breakdown of another link to another GitHub that tells you really in depth how these protocols work, how it talks. And I've already done the setup work to get all of this set up. They have all the instructions in here. I'm not going to walk through those in detail, but let's go ahead and dive into our network setup and how we're actually going to extract the keys. Right here is my PFSense. Here's my lab Unify controller. Now, this is all internal addressing, so we're at 172.16.69.17. This is my internal controller, and we are running the latest, as of right now, I should say, the latest version of the Unify controller software, the 6.0 series. No, don't upgrade to the 6.0 yet. I have another video on that topic I'll leave a link to. Um, there's still some testing going on, but I wanted to do it with the latest version. So what we have here is my USXG6POE, which is right here. 
Plugged into that, on a separate network, we have my Unify access point. Now, this is plugged into 192.168.3.189. It's the IP address, and it's getting it from my PF SenseBox. By the way, these are all private IP addresses. But this same applies if it's public. That's part of the simulation. I didn't bother spinning it up in the public cloud. Just not really worth the trouble to do so. But ideally, if you have a threat actor who is here on the line, who is intercepting this, whether it's going out over the public internet like this, or internally, if you have a threat actor that can listen to this process, either side of the network. So if they're over here, they can listen on the line. They're somewhere in between anyways, between your adoption and your controller. This is where the threat problem comes in. Now, short answer as to how to mitigate this. If you were to have this device over here on the same network and you have a clean network, or even in a scenario I have here, I don't have any untrusted threat actors besides myself sniffing packets on my network. So if I adopt this device to this controller and then migrate it to a cloud because I'm doing a key migration at that point and it's already keyed, that does mitigate this. What we're going to show is we're going to sniff the line here. That's the traffic going across to this controller so we can extract the keys and basically prove what this security researcher put together that it all works. So in order to do that, we have to do some wire sharking. Now I've got a whole video on wire and PF Sense I'll leak to, but PF Sense has a really slick way to actually pull wire shark directly in to my Linux terminal here, or you can go in PFSense and just grab a PCAP file. I like to do it the fun way by running Wireshark locally on my computer here. So we're gonna do Wireshark. We're gonna log into my PFSense. We're going to pull and filter specifically for host 3.189. And then we're going to SSH into that because this device is a Unify access point that's still at the default, has not been adopted yet. So first we'll kick off Wireshark so we can start grabbing packets. All right. And you can see it's actually got some queries going out, DNS queries. It's basically looking and doing not much. And we're going to go ahead and log into it over here. UBNT, UBNT, that's the default password. Now by SSHing into this, and we can show you something real quick, we'll make some noise. We're gonna go ahead and ping something. We'll ping 1.1.1.1. And look, ICMP request to 111. So you know I'm capturing the right device. I'm capturing data out of it, and you can see it going back and forth. Now the goal is gonna to be to set the inform URL. So what we do here is we are going to set the inform URL to be my Unify controller which is this right here. So it's at 172.16.69.17. And just like they show in the Unify documentation, we're going to SSH into this device and then use a manual set and form. Now, normally if the device is on the same network and it will automatically adopt. So if we're in the same subnet with the device, the discovery protocol that Unify uses allows it to find networks in devices on the same network and automatically adopt them. When you have a device on a separate network or you want to adopt to a cloud controller, you need to set the inform URL because we're just going to use IPs. It's going to be all IP addresses instead of full path, but the process is the same. So we're going to set the inform URL to be 172.69.17. Go over here, set inform 172.69.17. Let me get Wireshark going behind here. And here comes that adoption process. There went the back and forth. Now we'll switch back over to here, pending adoption. And this is the point. I close this here, close this, push the adopt. Now it's gone through the adoption. Now once it goes through this adoption, it's done. The process of capturing this has been complete. So I sniff the traffic. I listen to the communication between this particular device and the Unify controller. And now we're going to grab this cap after I'll make sure it has all the full capture of the packets once we confirm it's adopted. So it says adopting. So this changes, I'll have the full capture and we're going to save it and walk through the proof of concept. All right, so we adopted the controller, sniffed the packets. Now comes the fun part. I took that Wireshark, I dumped it into a PCAP file, and then I went over and per the instructions that the security researcher did, use their Pixie Dust tool that is over on their GitHub. So we went over and 
I loaded Go. I cloned the Git repo. You just go go build. The install instructions are really that simple. Step one, step two, step three, and copy over PCAP file. Now, what did it extract? Well, let's find out. So here is that unify adoption.pcap, find keys, message false, log store dir equals false, and that's it. I've now extracted the key. What can you do with this key information? Well, they actually have a couple fun things in here. You can view the sent in form from the device truncated there. You can view config settings as applied to the device. This is actually really kind of clever that you are able to pull this type of information out, including guest mode password. Yeah, that's not good. So as you're pushing commands and settings over to this Unify, because we are able to extract the key during the adoption process, there's all these fun things that you're going to be able to do with this information. So is this a really big problem, I guess is what a lot of you might be asking. And yes and no. And let me explain. The reason I say yes and no is because the issue is definitely something I think Unify should fix. Uh, it may be one of those things that they take a long time to fix because fundamentally you got to think about all the devices out there and changing it's not simple. How do you mitigate this is really easy. Go over here to our diagram and as I mentioned earlier, you just want to make sure that wherever you're adopting these, and for example, if we are going to adopt these, and this is actually the process we've been following forever over here at my company for all of our local clients, or even some that are not so local we ship things to, we adopt all the devices internally here, get them all updated, configured, then we put them over at the clients, deploy them and set them up. By doing that process, as long as our network is trusted, which it is, then there's not really an issue here. If you were to do the circumstance like I did in the demo here, where you adapted it and there's potentially someone because you passed it along an untrusted network, in this particular demo here, I was the untrusted actor extracting the files extracting the capture from the adoption. So I became the problem, so to speak, and I was able to pull that information and get those keys out of the controller. Yes, that's obviously an issue. And if you're just hosting it somewhere in the cloud and you you set in form and well, someone's out there listening, yeah, they could possibly get this and then have configuration information that is being passed over there. But it also requires another thing that wasn't mentioned here in the article of persistence. So let's say I have something and use DigitalOcean as an example, because we've certainly spun a few of these up in DigitalOcean or even Hostify. We've recommended a lot of people there. That would mean someone would have to be on the line listening when you adopt the device and then continue to be on the line after you adopt the device, applying that key to decrypt the data. Now, I'm not here defending trying to say that this particular circumstance is you know, not serious, but I will tell you that it takes a lot to have someone on the public internet persistently listening to you. Now, if you have a three letter agency after you, that's a completely different scenario. And obviously this is probably gonna be something maybe they would do if they had a target in mind. And that target was uh, someone that they wanna throw a lot of resources at. Yes, large government agencies have resources to really pursue this. It is a little bit more difficult, not impossible, uh, for someone to tap the line of somewhere like DigitalOcean. Does tapping all of the line requires, well, a lot of know-how and getting in somewhere and it's a massive amount of data to capture when you talk about tapping the line. Like I said, I'm not trying to say that this shouldn't be fixed or anything at all or it's not serious. I just wanted to show the real likelihood of this happening is actually a little bit lower unless you're someone who's got a government agency very interested in sniffing the content of what you do. In that case, I hope you're doing things very securely and only doing it the way I mentioned where you adopt them internally and pass them out. Now, the passing of a controller when you move it from a locally hosted and adopted controller to to the public internet is passed off securely, it provided you use the default way Unify does it. It hands off the encryption keys in an encrypted manner. Now, one thing I'll admit that I thought was kind of interesting, and it was this line right here. It's not that Unify didn't do anything to obscure and just leave everything out in plain text. Matter of fact, they do encryption based on MD5 sum. And you can do some reading, you'll find MD5 sum not particularly a strong methodology, especially when you base it on a weak hash. MD5 sum is just a hash and they base that hash on UBNT. Think about that for a second. That's gonna be in a word guess list in terms of if I was going to come up with a hash based on something, there are plenty of MD5 sum 
you know, reverse engineering tools out there. And they're easy to do, especially because there's many of them that are based on common words and part of passwords, but they base it on their company name. And of course, the default SSH credentials of UBNT and UBNT. So um, yeah, I thought that part was a little bit funny when I was reading through here. I'll leave links to all this so you can do your own research. And once again, they did, I think this is just an excellent write-up because they provided proof of concept. They described how it works. They described everything in between on this. And I'm hoping uh, Unify a addresses this. It's going to be a while before they get it addressed, I think, because of all the devices they have out there. Uh, but it is a solid piece of information. But I'll let you determine based on everything I told you whether or not you think it's something you directly need to worry about. But yeah, still interesting, still fun to play with. Uh, I did enjoy doing this whole proof of concept. Thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.